We're out here today at one of our local lakes here in central Arkansas. Use this lake as a backdrop for a story I want to share with you today. This is, this is one for some of our X-Files crowd that uh, likes the mysterious and the unexplained. This is about a ship called the Ellen Austin. A uh, story that took place many, many years ago. And uh, so let's go there right now. In 1881, the Ellen Austin set sail from England to journey to New York. And a month later, it was coming to the close of its journey. But as it was sailing through what we know of today as the Bermuda Triangle, it was surrounded by a mist so that the visibility was severely compromised. It was hard to see anything around you. And the crew began to sail slower and the lookout was positioned up top of the crow's nest to try to see if there's anything around through the mist. And uh, not long later, the lookout declared that he saw a ship and they called out to it. The people down below couldn't see it yet, but from up top, he could. They called out to the ship and no one answered. Pretty soon, those that were uh, on the Ellen Austin saw what he was seeing and they called out and still no response. When the fog eventually cleared, they realized that the other ship was abandoned. Uh, captain Baker, who was the uh, officer of the, uh, the captain of the Ellen Austin, ordered six of his men to go uh, alongside the other ship, and they were going to sail this abandoned ship uh, with them uh, to New York so that they're all going to arrive together. What's fascinating is when they got into this ship, the captain's log and the trail boards were all missing from this second ship. So they didn't know who it was. They didn't know where it come from, what was on it. There was no crew members uh, and its name couldn't be known. And uh, Captain Baker figured it was probably from Honduras uh, running rum and sugar and uh, other uh, tradable goods. So the Ellen Austin had some men, about six men upon this mystery ship that they'd found. They set sail and there were several pleasant days together where the two ships were running together until they hit a storm that separated them and set them apart. And after the storm, uh, after the storm, the unnamed ship had vanished and they couldn't find it. So they began looking again. Captain Baker soon spotted it and began chasing the ship uh, for several hours because the wind was driving it uh, away from them. So Captain Baker turned his ship around, the Ellen Austin, and went after them. And as soon as uh, uh, they caught up, they found that the ship was once again abandoned. What happened to the six crew members that were on board? They were gone, they were vanished, and, and, and nothing that they had remained. So a reluctant crew, another group of six, uh, was convinced by the captain to go over to the empty ship and, uh, and to sail, continue to sail the ship with the Ellen Austin to New York. And these men decided if we're gonna be on that ship out there in that ocean, then we're gonna have some guns with us. So they armed themselves, got in. The two ships set sail in a close proximity with one another. A few hours later, uh, another fog bank set in and uh, the Ellen Austin, as they went through, they would signal out and call out and pretty soon they couldn't hear anything. And so they stopped and waited, and when the fog cleared, uh, Captain Baker, the Ellen Austin, searched all around, but not only had his crew vanished, but this time the entire ship vanished. The unnamed ship was gone uh, as, long, as well as with several of his crew members. Whatever happened, we don't know. They just disappeared, and the Ellen Austin would go on to New York uh, minus a dozen of their crew members. The Bible speaks to us in Proverbs chapter three. Sometimes we don't know where to go or what to do. Sometimes we come into some, some of our own mysterious times of life and we're not sure where to head or, or what decisions to make. In Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The hardest part is the trust. We like to trust what we can feel. We like to trust what we can touch. It's hard for us to put trust into something that's um, 
sort of mysterious. It's untrustworthy. The boat that they came across was untrustworthy. The crew they could trust, but the boat wasn't. The boat would apparently be a very treacherous thing. It would lead them astray. But with God, we can trust God. He's not mysterious. God is as real to us as this lake is, as these trees are. God is as real and as personal and as next door to us as, as right here. To be able to trust the Lord means uh, uh, with all my heart, means I don't, I don't hold anything back, but I lay it all out before Him. And I don't lean on my own understanding because there's so many things I cannot understand. The, the mystery of the Ellen Austin, it, it, you can't explain that. The, the, uh, when, it, when you talk about the Bermuda Triangle and, and many other things that are just mysteries, there are some things that cannot be solved. It's all right. You can't lean on your own understanding because if you tried to do that, then you'd never trust God. How can I trust a God that I cannot see? How can I trust a God that doesn't speak to me? How can I trust to a God that I'm not sure even exists? I know He exists because I have that relationship with Him. But for those who don't, it's a very difficult thing. If you're starting your new life on the Christ life, trying to track His footsteps and follow, follow Christ to live like Him, it can be a very difficult thing. God is not mysterious. God is our, our friend. God is our Savior. He's our Father. God's right there with us. And the more that you spend time learning who He is, learning to trust Him, you'll find that God's more real to you than that tree simply because that tree will one day be gone. That lake could one day dry up, but my God will never leave me. And as the Bible says, that in all of your ways you acknowledge God, you let God direct your path, you let God direct where you're going and, and what lies out there for you. You let God take care of that and He'll make your path straight. He'll make your life good. He'll make your life solid. He's not going to leave you stranded. He's not going to shipwreck you on, a, on, a, on an island somewhere without having a plan for something better for your life. As you live this week, as you go about your week, don't worry about the mysterious things of life. There will always be things that you'll question. Learn to trust God more than even what you see, even more than the path that's in front of you, the, the things you know that you can count on time and time again. You've got to be able to learn to trust God, the God you cannot see, over the situations that you can. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not cause you to just go through and spend your entire life in heartache. If we go through a hard time, it's to make us stronger. But there's always an end to every storm. God always has something better for your life. I pray you have a great week. I pray you know that God is with you. And I pray that you know that you are very loved. God bless you. Make this week a very good one.